Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. How are you? Very well indeed. How are you doing? I do like the tree, by the way. Thank you. A little I Christmas I touch. Mine up yet? I've got to get on with that when I get home. Oh, I would love to do it for you. <laughs> So how exciting to have Sing today. What was that moment where you know there was going to be a second Sing? Well, it just sort of started as an informal chat before we'd finished the first one. We were just thinking, oh, wouldn't it be funny if, or wouldn't it be great if, or like we started to talk about the characters and what they could do and then realized that there was this journey they could go on. And then once the first film came out, all those ideas started to sort of solidify and, and turn into the story that we've that we've now got. But yeah, it was it was a gradual process that started over coffee and donuts and then became quite serious. <laughs> yeah. So this for this time around, what were you looking forward to that you you say you, you put into Sing 2 that you were like you weren't able to use in Sing 1? Well, th there was so much because I'd never made an animated film before Sing 1. And so I had to learn all this stuff and I'd only just learned it. So I was so excited to be able to just build on that instead of just then leaving all those new skills that we'd, we'd acquired, I could, I could carry on also to work with this cast again, who are amazing. And my, my team in France, where all the animation is done, are really inspiring artists. And I love this combination of talents and, and, and being in the middle of it all. So I love that as a, as a, as a director, I love that. But also as a storyteller, I love the possibility of taking these characters from the first movie who have very humble beginnings and sending them on a really like massive epic quest to sort of fulfill their dreams in the you know the on the biggest stage possible that's really appealing you know Rosita and all that lot they're on the stage at the end there's barely a stage at the end of seeing one this one it's like they're flying on wires there's rocket ships there's battle scenes and fire and it, I just love that that scale difference will you sure send them on a big quest yes and for this one, I feel like there was so much that overlapped in this film because yes, you're directing, but in the film of seeing, there's also directing taking place. Yeah, it's it's funny how you start something and then you realize there's quite a lot of similarities in what you're doing and what they're doing in the movie. You know, they're trying to go do the biggest, most wonderful show they possibly can. And that's what we're trying to do with our movie. And they're finding it hard and it was hard you know because trying to create that scale and that drop that's really difficult i was very naive just like buster was you know i thought oh it'll be fine i know what i'm doing now <laughs> famous last words so it took more effort and more it was far more complicated than anything i've ever worked on before but my goodness it was worth it just like it was for is for that for the team and the characters in the movie the final result was something every one of us who's part of this is really proud of you mentioned Buster and who plays is played by Matthew McConaughey. But one thing that I noticed, and I don't know if maybe you guys did this on purpose or coincidence, but I saw some facial expressions that I feel like some of the talent might have in these characters. There's off, what we're doing when we're recording their voices for the parts. We don't use the video for it. We don't track them or anything like that. But sometimes it's very useful for lip sync to just see how they're saying the words. But sometimes they're doing something in the voice booth that is really good, that they're not even aware of. And uh, an animator might be watching that back for lip sync, but see something the actor did in their performance and go, oh, that actually is really useful. And, and so sometimes there might little be, there are traces of the real actor in there, yeah. I saw a lot in Buster. I'm relating Matthew and Buster. <laughs> yeah. He's, I mean, the thing is, you're obviously, as an actor, you're stuck behind a mic. You can't run around a room or point or just, you're stuck there. But he'll, he's very, he's very physical, even when he's just talking, Matthew. He's all over the place, arms and legs. And, you know, so a lot of that is very Buster as well. Because he's such a small character, he has to really work hard to be seen and understood. And, yeah. So there's right. a lot of Buster, a lot of Matthew in there, yeah. What was it like when it came to trying to get this cast because that's a that's a big cast and yeah. who was the one that you was like because of timing close to make not making it to sing to well the good thing is that the thing with these films is you record everybody separately so you we're almost always fitting around other people's schedules so when we're trying to record someone we're waiting for a gap like if it's scarlet you know she'll be jumping from being a in a Marvel movie to Marriage Story. And in that window, we'll quickly grab some songs and some scenes from Sing 2. Um, it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't so much a scheduling thing or anything like that. It was 
everyone we wanted we ended up working with which is that's the biggest miracle for me that everyone was able to find time and had loved the first film so they were they were really excited to be part of the sequel I enjoyed the film so much after each scene where there was music and there was singing it's like I wanted to clap yes I've been to a lot of screenings where there's just applause and, and it's, sometimes it's weird, if you go to a small screening, people are a little concerned whether they should clap or not. But you see this, you see this kind of like, like they're, they're like spontaneously going to clap. And, but when you go with families and kids, everyone just goes crazy for these performances because they love, they love seeing their heroes succeed and triumph on stage. In that case, I need to go back. I did watch it on a, on a screen, but I think we were all too intimidated to clap every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. So there are several messages. You know, um, all the characters have messages, you know, pretty much for us as viewers. Which one do you think was the, the one that touched you the most? Oh, I like, I mean, there's, there's a reason for all of them. And of course, I'm is as invested in each one equally. Um, I, but I, I, I think it was less about the messages that I was so invested in and more about that feeling, the overall feeling that I wanted. So it's kind of a message, but the feeling that the audience would have when the finish, film finished. That feeling like you've been through this adventure with them and they've triumphed and you get that, you get to, to sort of share that joy that they're experiencing, that you come out feeling like you've, you've kind of got that inside you. Do you know what I mean? That feeling of seeing something wonderful and having gone through this journey and you actually leave buzzing from it. That was the main goal that to give people that feeling at the end of it and then all those themes are really important but I always I'm always reluctant to sort of talk about themes or up front because I, I think they're best discovered rather than dictated was there a song that made you a little teary-eyed got some oh, yeah you? all of it does I mean um all this stuff really means a great deal to me whether it was goodbye yellow brick road or I still haven't found what I'm looking for um but I also get goosebumps from really fantastic tracks like Soyo, because they're so great. That might sound strange because it's a high energy track, but it just works so well. I, I, I find it, I find the whole process very emotional, to be honest. You know, I'm sort of living in this world for four years. So it has to be something we love and feel strongly about. It can't be something that you just think, no, oh, that's OK. You've got to love it. So there's always that emotional connection to the music. Another one of my favorite characters was Miss Crawley. Tell me how that Miss <laughs> Crawley came to mind, how you created her, and I mean, deciding to play Miss Crawley. Well, she started in the first film simply to be Buster's assistant and sort of comic foil to his situation, which is already bad, but and his assistant's even worse. And I love that she was, you know, looked physically incapable of doing anything, and but actually is pretty capable um, and I just love her and I do the voice for her and um, and so I really enjoy being her and I love that in the sequel we can say okay let's really put Miss Crawley to the test let's give her missions like let's give her a sports car and have her go and try and find this lion recluse let's deal with have her deal with a chase sequence let's have her take charge of the studio and become the boss of the studio when Mr Crystal uh, when Buster Moon's away you know I love empowering her because she's so loyal to Mr. Moon. She'll do anything for him and she'll just sort of toughen up and get into it. And I love seeing her do that. I loved it. I loved it. Thank you so much for your time. I love the film and I hope there's a three already. Oh, in thank you. Nice to chat to you. Likewise.